Welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien. If we take a look over here at the screen, we're at TFNN.com, and we're going to scroll down just a little bit. we got a bunch of things to select from, however. I want to take a look right now at Mastering Probability. Now, this is from our man Steve Rhodes. He is on at 11 a.m. Eastern Time every day. Now, if you're looking for a newsletter that really gets into the nitty-gritty about a bunch of stuff, right, and I'm talking it is thorough, this is the newsletter that you want. It is, uh, like I said, I, I read these newsletters all the time, and uh, I learn so much just about what's going on generally in the market. For Mastering Probability, again, we have a 30-day money-back guarantee uh, for all new subscribers. I strongly recommend checking this out if you haven't already. Steve Rhodes, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Jake. About yourself today? I am doing well. We're getting that uh, Florida heat rolling back in, aren't we now? <laughs> uh, 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 well, it was you know, too good. <laughs> yeah, yesterday my wife said on Wednesday it's supposed to be, he, um, how are they how are they calculate what the actual it feels like? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like 120 or something. Uh -huh. uh, I don't know if she was pulling my leg or what have you, but uh, it's still pretty decent. You know, I still I got out and played golf yesterday morning, and it was just fine. Love but it. we are getting... We are getting, you know, it is what's May thirteenth, so yeah, we're getting basically, <laughs> basically all the snowbirds are out of here, so we know that the heat is coming. Real exactly. Quickly. Yeah, it's a good yeah. indicator, right? <laughs> so. Totally. Totally. What you are know, we looking at we, today, Steve? Well, you okay. know what? I'll tell you what we'll look at. Uh, May, which is the month that we're in right now. Yeah, May yeah. is normally a down month for the S and P five hundred, and so we take a look at this chart periodically. This is a chart that is or a tool put out by the folks at Seasonex, and what's really great, I used to do some of this stuff manually. And I'd have to dump everything into a spreadsheet and then try to align days, um, you know, of the month. And uh, what's really nice, these guys have done it all. So I'm able to, uh, t this here that we're looking at, folks, this is a chart for, and they have, I think they have a 30-day trial or seven-day trial out there. Uh, and so if you like to understand seasonally what typically how an instrument performs out here, then this is a great tool for that. So what we have up on our screen right now is a 96-year average, price average, for uh, from January to December, how price moves. You don't really take a look at it. I don't take a look at it as the depth of a move, just really looking for where price typically turns out here. And, and for the month of May, and if you look at the bottom right-hand portion of the screen, you'll see that uh, typically February, May, and September are the three worst performing months mm. uh, for the S&P 500. When I say worst performing, they typically have a negative return. And what's interesting here is Mondays typically are the worst days of all uh, over, over an average for 96 years. So we can see here, oops, sorry about that. What we can see here is that uh, the, the S&P, if it held to the exact seasonal process, should have formed a top uh, last week, maybe around Tuesday, Wednesday or so. So we're beyond that. And, of course, this shows that we uh, would see a bottom form towards the end of this month here, maybe in another week and a half or so. But over the last 96 years, May is tough. So I'm still in search for a top out there. Mm -hmm. So when we take a look, when the S&P 500 when it topped in July, so first, just a little frame of reference, when I take a look at these tools, as you said, I'm pretty thorough. I believe the way you do anything is the way you do everything in life. Think about that yeah. uh, and, and then kind of apply that to uh, folks that you know or even yourself out there. And so, yeah, absolutely thorough out here. And so I don't want to just put forth an idea without being able to have some evidence for people to make their own judgment. So when the S&P 500 topped in July of 2023, the S&P 5, the SPY, so the ETF for the S&P 500, the equal weighted ETF, which is RSP, and then the actual S&P 500 index, what they each did is they generated one of the patterns that we teach here. The, this pattern was taught to me by both Tom and Larry Pesavento, and it's the A to B equals CD pattern. I refer to this as a sell the D point top. And the way that that occurs, so we can see the A to B equals CD patterns out here. And for me, the way that a top is identified is as price approaches, price target levels, we see bearish reversal candles. And that's exactly what we saw across the board for all three of these on July 27th, and that clearly led to a top. If we take a look at the top that formed in the S&P 500 in February, February 2nd of 2023, what we'll see here is that the SPY, the RSP, and the S&P 500 S&P 500 index, don't worry, I'll get it out. They all generated TD9 count tops across the board. That's one of the patterns, as you know, that I teach uh, folks. It's one of the patterns that we use to help identify the markets and for good reason out here. So that's the past. If the S&P is going to top again, 
then we should see confirmed tops for the daily time frame for the S&P 500, for the ES Mini, for the SPY and the RSP. And folks, this is really how you would put this together with the seasonal pattern. So a seasonal pattern says, hey, on average, we should make a top right around uh, May the 7th, 8th, something like that. Well, you don't just take that carte blanche. There's no need to. We teach patterns here that help us identify when an instrument is likely going to top. So if we are going to see a top again, we should see confirmed tops in in the S&P, in these instruments for the S&P 500. As we speak, and this was a snapshot, uh, Jacob, from about an hour ago, yeah. there is no such top in place as we speak just yet. Now, we could get something over the next couple of days. There's the A to B equals CD pattern. We do not have a bearish reversal candle. Look, there's still time left in the day for that to take place. But as we speak right now, we don't have that top in place. If we take a look at the NDX 100, if that is going to top again, so I want to just shift from the S&P 500, Jacob, move over to the NASDAQ 100. We should see confirmed tops for the daily time frame. That's what we're looking at right now for the NDX 100, for the equity future contract, the NQ, for the Qs, the ETF, and for the equal weight, QQEW. Again, this is a snapshot from about an hour ago. It, uh, if we were to see a bearish reversal candle, then each of these would form a top today. But that was not the pattern that's in place. And what that says, folks, is that price may continue to move higher. You're still waiting for and looking for um, some type of bearish reversal candle to confirm that at least sellers are now ready to try to uh, force their muscle. If we take a look at the, um, the Dow, if the Dow is going to top again, we should see confirmed tops for each of the time frames. Now, in the case of the Dow, this is kind of interesting. The equity future contract, that's the one on the very left-hand side, folks, both the Friday high and low were exceeded. As long as the Dow equity future contract closes one tick to the downside, this is a confirmed sell the D point pattern. That candle would be referred to as a key reversal bar, Jacob. And we would have that same thing inside the Dow Jones Industrials, the cash index out here. In this case here, the cash index did not form an A to B equals CD pattern, nor did the Dow Diamonds or the equal weighted. What they did was they generated consolidation patterns. And those are the little squares or rectangle boxes on the screens there. And once you get that consolidation, when price breaks through a consolidation, it usually does a measured move. And in each case here, well, at least with regard to the, the cash index and the equity and the future contract, they both made a more than a measured move. In the case of the equal weight, it's the only made a measured move. So we're watching, or I'm watching for bearish reversal candles here because we may get a confirmed top inside of the Dow equity, at, inside of the Dow today, which would go along with the top inside of the Russell 2000. And last Friday, uh, what we got for the Russell 2000 cash index, for the equity future contract, and for the IWM was confirmed sell the D point patterns out there. This is the SMH ETF. This still has a way to go before it would complete its A to B equals CD pattern. And I'll leave you with this. And this is a tool, the parabolic SAR tool. Uh, one of our listeners, Garo, uses it all the time. Oh, yeah. Where I found that it really helps is in taking a look at the spot volatile index and when it's going to go ahead and make a change in trend out there. These blue lines and the dots out there that I've got, the blue lines actually show us when, in fact, we have a bottom inside the S&P 500. Now, two of the last uh, three times they have worked. This red uh, vertical line is when we get this parabolic SAR dot on the bottom, and that identified the last top out there. You can see right now we got a parabolic SAR top at 1419. That's going to change tomorrow, so I think folks should tune in at 11 o'clock, and we'll review this chart then. Fantastic. Steve, thank you so much for coming on. It is uh, great as always. Thank you. You bet, Jacob. Take folks, care. Folks, Mastering Probability Newsletter, you got to get it. 11 a.m. Eastern Time, you got to be there. We'll be right back. Thank you.